God calls us to be a witness and a testimony wherever we are. God is touching many people today. I caught up with Dr. Tony Stone, an evangelist based in Stourbridge, England. Now, Tony, you're able to claim to be Jewish, as your mother was Jewish and brought up in an Orthodox Jewish family. But one day, she met the Messiah. How did that happen? When she was still a, a young lady, she was about 17 years of age, she was walking through one of the local parks and there was a large marquee up and she heard wonderful singing coming from this marquee so she went closer only intending to stand in the doorway and before she knew it she was actually sat on one of the seats at the back and it was um, a gospel Christian gospel um, crusade and for the first time she heard about Yeshua Jesus as uh, a saviour not just as someone in history and she'd never ever heard of him spoken of in that way before and through hearing that message uh, she yielded to the claims of Jesus and received him into her own heart and life and became a committed Christian at that stage mm. so she recognised Jesus was the Messiah now, how did her family respond to that? it was a very difficult time for her because being fairly orthodox they obviously did not have um, any desire to see any of their family going in that direction and so in the early days she suffered quite considerably uh, as a result of that Now when you were in London you lived in a Jewish area and your neighbours were Jewish I, I, I hear you got opportunities to make a little bit of money out of that <laughs> Well that is true, it wasn't predominantly a Jewish area because I lived outside of London um, but there was a Jewish family within the street and so on uh, the Sabbath it was they, they were not able to do any form of work and so uh, first thing in the morning on a Saturday morning I would go down to their house pre-arranged and uh, they had already set the fire in the fireplace with the paper and the wood and the coal and uh, I would be the one to strike the match and to light it up and then a little later in the day my mother would go down and uh, she would um, uh, put the um, gas on under the, their food and so uh, they very kindly paid me for doing that so <laughs> that was a regular Saturday it was like pocket money really So were you brought up in a traditional Christian household or a traditional Jewish household? Uh, I was raised in a Christian home because my mother uh, when she came to Christ she went along to the local church and uh, a lay preacher came along and uh, she met him that was my father and so um, I had a Gentile father, a preacher and I was raised in a very godly Christian home mm. Now you were saved at 11 years of age and how did that happen? Well you could imagine I'd been exposed to the message for those 11 years really and I knew exactly what it meant to be a Christian although I suppose I was guilty of depending on the fact that my dad was quite a well known preacher and my mother was a very godly Christian lady um, and uh, it was just one Sunday night that when the preacher preached I realized that God did not have grandchildren he only had children and that I couldn't get to heaven on my parents faith I needed a personal faith and so uh, that night um, instead of sort of going in one ear and out of the other the message really touched my heart and I went forward and yielded my life to Christ and I've known ever since the joy of that salvation that Jesus gives now yet this year you're celebrating 50 years in ministry what things have you, differences have you seen change in, in ministry in general? Well, of course, a lot changes, as it does in every strata of society. Um, I've spent my 50 years mostly as an evangelist. And, of course, years ago we were involved in uh, crusades that would last for up to two weeks and you would get good crowds out every night. These days it's very difficult to get people to come out to those kind of events. And our evangelism today is mostly going to where people are um, and reaching people through... Uh, almost social activities such as coffee mornings, dinners, um, perhaps a, a, an evening of um, almost a cabaret style. Um, but there are many, many ways, and the gospel has certainly never changed in the 50 years, and it's still the same message, but the means and the opportunities have changed a lot over 50 years. Mm. Now, you didn't actually start in ministry at first. What did you first start off as? Uh, I went first of all into an acting career and um, I trained a little in an acting school and uh, then I w was given opportunity for small parts in uh, films and so that's where I started and uh, right up until um, 
I mean, I left school at 15, and uh, then when I went in the army at 18, I think it was then that God really began to deal with me, and I felt the call of God of my life to become a preacher. So I come from an acting background, and um, then um, during the, the time I served in the national service in the army, uh, I got a real burden to preach the gospel, and that's what I've done ever since. So did you act with anybody famous? I was, you go into a stable, that means you work with the same well-known actor in very small, you know, sort of bit parts, and um, for two years, I guess it was, in whole, um, I worked with David Niven, who was a well-known, in those days, a well-known British actor. So what would your prayer be for any Jewish person who doesn't know Jesus today? Well, I would certainly invite and even challenge them to examine the evidence. The more I read the Old Testament... Uh, and, and in that sense the Jewish Bible uh, I see so much in prophecy proclaiming that one was coming who would be the Messiah and then when I read the Gospels and the life of Jesus I recognize how that he fulfills every one of the Jewish prophecies and I would really challenge my Jewish friends uh, to examine the evidence before they make up their mind and I'm convinced that they too will see that he, Jesus, is truly the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Sami Badra is a Palestinian man that God touched in a mighty way. He lives in Bethlehem and works at the House of Hope. And I asked him, what do you do there at the House of Hope? Well, I'm working uh, here first as a house father for uh, three boys at the moment, young teenagers. And I do different things in the home, like driving and doing other things, sort of things. And um, you're a Christian? How long have you been a Christian? Oh, over 20 years. And how did you become a Christian? Oh, but I can say that God made me in, in the prison before 20 years. You were in prison? Yeah. And uh, you got saved in prison? Yes. How did that happen? I was one of the people who are used to be throwing stones on the soldiers. And uh, suddenly I met one of the pastors, his name is Naim Kuri, and he's a pastor of the first Baptist church in Bethlehem. And uh, he invited me to come to church. And since that time I started to go to his church, but the first three years I didn't, uh, I didn't take it uh, serious to be, become a good Christian or, uh, or something like this, but people who are looking at me in that time used to say, oh, he's a nice guy, or he's a good believer, or he's like, but they don't know me inside. And then after three years, I'm going to this church just because I like to go and to see people, how they are doing, and to chat with people, girls, or something like this. But, uh, one of the Sundays, I had this friend who uh, used to be my my neighbor in, in the home. He has been killed, and in that time, people in my town thought that the Israelis killed him. And they it was a trouble in that day. And I didn't do anything. I didn't throw stones on the soldiers. I didn't uh, do any bad things. But they get me because... Uh, I, I attended to, to the funeral of that guy, and they get me and they get other, other boy, young men. So that's how I, they, they took me to, this, uh, to the prison, and the Lord met me in the prison there. Yeah. And um, did that change your life? Of course. I had to give him my life. Yeah. And in the prison, I start to... Uh, shouting at God and cursing to him why I am here and why you brought me here, why, what did I do, I didn't do anything today and, and something like this. And suddenly I, uh, I felt something in my side saying to me, the family, that you are being with me two ways and I, would, I want you to choose one way, you know. And since that time I, I choose him. Yeah, what life now like being a Christian? Well, it's not easy life yeah. to be a Christian, mm -hmm. but it's a joyful to be with the Christ in the same time. It's not easy because when you are speaking to people or when you try to help, to find anything to help people, uh, 
it is really so difficult. But the Lord doesn't promise us that we can walk on the flowers or to be like a, live like a queen or king or kings or you know. But uh, I feel happy when I help others now. I feel happy when I people send me some money to help the others also. Now you say you help others. What sort of things do you do to help other people? Well, uh, with with all with what I can do, you know, like uh, buy food for the poor families. Doesn't matter Muslim or Christians or whatever Jewish. Uh, try to reach to every house here around Bethlehem and in Bethlehem. Try to reach to make the gospel reach uh, the homes, reach the, every heart. How easy is it being a Christian living here in Bethlehem? in the Palestinian territories and the struggles between Israel and the Palestinians? Well, the situation is difficult not just for me as a Christian. It, uh, the situation is uh, worse for everybody here who are living in the area. But we are, as a Christian people, we are looking at things as a thing that how we can serve God in this situation. What sort of difficulties do you face? Well, the, lots of difficulties uh, like uh, when we reach to the families, and some some of them they we cannot reach to them, and also the checkpoints who are between the towns, between the cities, you know we cannot go, and uh, sometimes it's difficult. So, for instance, you can't go to Jerusalem, which is six miles away from Bethlehem. Yes, so that makes it very hard. This is also very very difficult for us, and to be in one place all the time, uh, like in Bethlehem area all the time, it's also. T- uh, bad for our psychological. Right. Uh, what about the economy? Because Bethlehem has been based on tourism. So, are there many tourists here in Bethlehem? Not at the moment. Thank God that a few weeks ago it starts coming, the, the crews start coming. But the economy, till, as I heard the, the other time, that eight, around 80% of people in Bethlehem, they don't they doesn't work. Right. So, how can the church in the West um, help the people here in Bethlehem? Well, they can help with uh, with everything, with money, with the uh, political thing. I mean, uh, with uh, with everything they can they can help. Yeah. So, what would you like to say to the church in the West? Well, please look at us. Look more at us. Yeah. Most of the people they are looking at the Israeli side, but they don't forget. They they do forget this area that there is a Palestinian believers, Christian believers who are living in this area here need to be helped, so they can do help others. So the Palestinian Christians here that, that need prayed for, that need encouragement, that need help. Yes, right. yes.